So this is an interesting movie with a cinematic release. In cinemas and then... Uh, and on Sky. On, yeah, yes, exactly. So um, directed by James Marsh, who just you know won an Oscar for Man on Wire, which is just one of the greatest documentaries. Um, Helms, the brilliant and heartbreaking project name, which I really loved, won the Alexander Corder Best British Film Award for Theory of Everything. So like Theory of Everything, and actually before it, um, The Mercy, this is obviously based on a real life character. So as he said, it starts at the Nobel Prize ceremony. I think it's 69. Um, and then it what a catastrophe. And then the whole thing is this theatrical conceit. As he said, he climbs up in the thing and he ends up in a, in a space which is very waiting for Godot space, in which there are two two characters, which are both him, one of them full of, you know, guilt and self-recrimination, the other rather more, you know, kind of uh, arch and prodding. And they then decide that they will go back through their life, through the shame, through the guilt of their life. Um, start with mother. It always starts with mother is one of the early lines. His father teaching him that that mantra of fight, 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 which he hears, and then he kind of repeats throughout the throughout the thing. And then what the film does is it intertwines biographical detail, which like you, I knew almost nothing of. So obviously there's the philosophical stuff from the plays. There is the biographical detail. I didn't know about his work in the resistance. Yeah. I didn't know about the stabbing, which uh, Gabriel Byrne referred to there, stabbing by the pimp. I didn't know anything about his personal relationships. So it's as you were discussing that, it is tricky. I do think that the the script, which is Neil Forsyth, I think it manages to do the gear changes pretty nimbly. That you you don't feel that this or it is it is a theatrical conceit, but it doesn't feel that thre that theatrical um, in as terms of like not cinematic. I think it I think it does work. Most of the film is in black and white, not all of it. Significantly in the sort of later stages, there there, there is a change, um, and it looks looks great. It was funny when he was saying to the story about having to talk to himself and talking to the tennis ball. You always forget that it's talking to mm. it. It's always the tennis ball is the thing. It's the, the Paddington story. I mean, I thought what was fascinating was, you know, I've just come back from Trieste and Trieste is full of statues of James Joyce. James Joyce is played in the film by Aidan Gillen, who I love. And in fact, it's, it's a great cast. It's a really, really good cast. There are you know, there are, it's with Gabriel Byrne, Aidan Gillen, Bronny Gallagher, who's never been bad in anything, Maxine Peake, who I've never seen be bad in anything. Um, Sandrine Bonaire. Sandrine Bonaire, yeah. Who's, I mean, so it's a, it's a really sort of top-notch cast. And what it manages to do is, I, I think there are bits of it are, you know, funny and witty. I didn't know anything about the James Joyce's daughter story, which it, which you think th this must be made up, but apparently it's not. Apparently, you know, there is there is truth in it. So it manages to be dramatically engrossing, like you're actually interested in the character and the story. Where I'll be honest with you, when you said to me, I'm interviewing Gabriel Byrne about a film about Samuel Beckett, my heart sank. And then when I watched the film, it wasn't anything like I expected it to be. So I think it's very well written. I think it's very well played. And actually, although you could think that it is a clunky theatrical device about the phrase that you use, which is, you know, that monologue becomes, di inner monologue becomes inner dialogue. That reminded me of Nick Cage in adaptation, you know, when there's the author is split into two... two Nick Cage two, or Nick Cave? Nick Cage. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. In adaptation in which the author is a divided soul who, you know, uh, there are two versions of that character and they argue with, they argue with each other. Um, yeah, I thought it worked surprisingly well. I mean, and I believe me, I was surprised because it just sounds like it's going to be the most doer subject matter. You know, a largely black and white film about the life of Samuel Beckett. You do think, is Mighty Morphing Power Rangers on in the next yeah. screen? But no, actually, but actually it's, it's really entertaining. Yeah. And interesting is observation via Marquez about private life, public, public life, life and, and secret, secret life. life. And that's exactly where this movie manages to take take us into his secret life. Yeah. Um, anyway, more, and I would recommend uh, hearing more. You with, enjoyed the film, right, didn't you? Yeah. I did enjoy the film and I enjoyed talking to, and were you talking to Gabriel. Were you surprised yes. by how much you enjoyed it? You know, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not being down on it. I'm just saying that if you describe that subject matter, if you say black and white biopic of Samuel Beckett, you go. <sighs> yeah. And I expected the conversation to be maybe a little bit, you know, difficult, but he's passionate. You know, he's fantastic. You can hear he's yeah, great, 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 great conversation. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.